Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Monday, February 19. Government is projecting 2.5% real economic growth for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. The projection is contained in the 2018-2019 fiscal policy paper, which was tabled in the House of Representatives by Finance and Public Service Minister Audley Shaw last Thursday. The policy paper also projects average growth of 2.1% up to fiscal year 2021-2022. It's predicated on the continued strengthening of most industries, chief among them mining and quarrying, which is expected to see growth of 25% due largely to increased global demand for aluminium. The local industry is also expected to benefit from market diversification, particularly targeting the Asian bloc. At the same time, the agriculture, fishing and forestry industry is expected to rebound from the effects of bad weather in 2017 to record 7% growth in the new fiscal year. Growth is also projected for hotels and restaurants and the electricity and water sector. The Jamaica Dairy Development Board is projecting a 15% increase in local milk production this year, building on a 10% increase in 2017. Chairman of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, JDDB, Donald Elvey, says local dairy output increased by 1.3 million litres last year and a further 2 million litre increase is expected this year. Our goal of achieving 20 million liters of milk by the year 2020 is on track and we believe by 2019 based on the projections in this industry we will achieve that target he says the jamaica dairy development board will be rolling out a series of initiatives to support this growth it includes a project that will be rolled out shortly to encourage dairy farmers who've exited the industry to resume production with support from the board. Steps will also be taken to improve the facilities at the Bodles Research Station, while farmers will shortly be provided with about 300 dairy heifers. The JDDB's chairman says the Mombasa grass project that was initiated to assist dairy farmers explore the potential of the grass will be revitalized. Approximately 1,000 acres of pasture will be planted this year. These initiatives are aimed at providing better nutrition, increasing or improve genetic animal with the capacity to produce more to our farmers. There is also an initiative to introduce improved bloodline into Jamaica. And I will not say much on this because we are in this discussion with the veterinary division of the ministry. In the meantime, dairy farmers from Clarendon, St. Elizabeth and St. Thomas have received approximately $5 million worth of fertilizer and attendant supplies to help improve production. The supplies were handed out during a ceremony at the Rhymesbury Dairy Farmers Cooperative Building in Clarendon on Friday. The donation represents collaboration among the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, Newport for San Jamaica Limited, and Nutrimix. Agriculture Minister Carl Samuda used the occasion to urge dairy farmers to take steps to boost production and improve their competitiveness. The challenge for me as the minister is to determine what are the best strategies to enable you to improve your production. One of the strategies that we have to pursue is a collective strategy between the ministry and especially RADA and the dairy board to see how best we can mix our resources to ensure that the farmers can get their fields irrigated on a regular basis. Work to construct a new pharmacy at the Linstead Hospital in St. Catherine has moved a step closer to fruition. Chief Executive Officer at the National Health Fund, Everton Anderson, says the contract for this has been endorsed by the National Contracts Commission. And we hope to sign that contract in very short order, but that's a big thing for us. Mr. Anderson was speaking at the recent reopening of the Linstead Hospital's expanded A&D department. The hospital was also presented with a check donation of $600,000, representing proceeds from Trade Wins True Juice yearly fundraising event, the 5K Run, 20K Run Walk, and 20K Rides. 
The Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica will be implementing the Energy Management and Efficiency Program this fiscal year. The program is expected to reduce electricity consumption and carbon dioxide in public sector facilities. It should also reduce travel times and fuel consumption and increase the Science, Energy and Technology Ministry's capacity to update the Integrated Resource Plan for the island. This was disclosed by the Governor-General during his throne speech in Parliament. This year, Jamaica's economic development will be enhanced by the science and technology sectors through growth in industries, increased production of value-added products, innovations, increased number of local patents being registered, employment, and the energy sector through the development of energy infrastructure, security, and efficiency to sustain the productive sectors. The program is being sponsored by the Inter-American Development Bank and the Japan International Cooperation Agency. And finally, Jamaica is set to host the 35th staging of the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO's, Regional Conference for Latin America and the Caribbean. It will be held at the Montego Bay Conference Center in St. James from March 5 to 8. The event will focus on several issues, including ending rural poverty, promoting climate resilience and sustainable agriculture, and eradicating hunger. Delegates will also address overweight and obesity and creating a new FAO to move towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Addressing the recent media launch, Agriculture Minister Carl Samuda welcomed the conference, which hasn't been hosted in Jamaica in 50 years. This conference, we're looking forward to it, to exchange views with our colleague ministers in the, CAR, in the CARICOM region. We are looking forward to the suggestions that will be made. Um, we are particularly happy that our Prime Minister has consented to uh, be the main speaker uh, at the conference because he is someone who is seized of the significance that agriculture has and the growth uh, of our country, our economy. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.